been a long time since I've been in front of a camera, so this is a new experience for me. Fresh one. But yeah, I'm enjoying it. Who's going to do better, you or Graham? Graham. He's an old hat. He knows what he's doing. Oh, hi. Didn't notice you there. So today we're talking about resonance within the Claudius tool. What's Claudius? Ah, oh, tough question. <laughs> OK. Claudius is our new audio tool that brings together all the different audio functions into one place so that the sound designers can access everything they need without going through needless code requests all the time. My favourite thing about Claudius is the fact that I won't have to jump into so many different tools and programs to get in-game and get the sounds sounding the way that I want them to and the way that I envision them in my head. We did a whole thing on it at CitizenCon a few years ago. You should go watch it. I'll just wait. I'm much more natural on that camera when I'm not looking at the tele. One of the ways in which we're looking to improve the audio experience of Star Citizen is to find ways to better meet the player's expectations of what is being heard in the game world. We already create the sounds that you would expect for objects and interactions in the game and glue them together with reverb and effects, but we can always go further. Our latest piece of tech within the Claudius editor is Resonance, which allows us to take a game event that is either loud or particularly high sound pressure and make other elements of the game respond in much the same way as you would expect in the real world. Resonance, put simply, is the sensitivity of objects to vibration, and in terms of our tech, it's the sound that they make as a result. We're aiming to fill a gap that currently exists with certain things not dynamically responding, at least in an audible sense, to player input and events transpiring in the world. We want to add another layer to the soundscape that just sprinkles a little more life into it and makes it just that little bit more real. You're there, you're experiencing it. Our new tech allows us to quickly create resonances around points in the world in response to game events that can then be reflected by the objects and geometry around those points. We can add a resonance driver node in Claudius and set the size of its sphere of influence and also how long it takes to decay to nothing. We can then add resonator nodes to any audio object that we see fit. When the resonator is caught in the sphere of influence of the driver during gameplay, we use the resulting output to decide how loudly the object should resonate. What we're saying is we're taking uh, game events in the world and we're trying to make the world around you respond in a much more realistic way to what you're doing. So if you're firing a weapon next to a window, you'd expect it to go or something like that. You know, a metal panel, sheet panel, that kind of thing. We can also set frequencies for both the driver and the resonator and make them respond only if the driver hits the resonant frequency of the resonator. So basically, if the frequency of a driver is changing, it might hit a certain frequency that excites an object much more than it does at other frequencies. Even with a simple example, there's already a greater sense of cause and effect. The props around you feel connected to your actions and you feel more immersed as a result. This being implemented via Claudius in the straightforward visual logic-based scripting way means that getting your sounds in-game and working is just that much quicker. There are so many interweaving systems at play on the engine side that it usually can prove a challenge to get the desired outcome. Just from the resonator and resonance nodes alone, we can manage quick tweaks to dial in the exact kind of sounds we're wanting. And we're having it happen live and in context as we go. Claudius's design philosophy is to put workflow first, and with this in mind, the resonance tech makes it easy to take a location or ship and populate it with the kind of responses you hear happening around you in real life. The potential here is large, so having a tool that makes it easy becomes incredibly important. The underlying tech is designed to give the designers everything they need to implement. We're not relying on repeated code support requests to get this kind of dynamism in for our sounds. No one knows what you need to achieve the result you're aiming for in your head better than yourself. And that can take time and iteration, but here we have all the tools to do that by ourselves. 
So now we can take a location, look around it and think about what we'd expect to hear when, for example, a weapon is fired and quickly add the markup to the game to make it do what we expect. Here we can see a few candidates. Metal locker doors, a waste bin, empty cans, some windows, containers. By adding audio components to these objects or adding audio entities to the world markup, we can easily create their resonant responses. Adding these resonances brings variety and realism to the soundscape. So we're no longer just hearing weapons and reverb, we're now hearing the objects and materials around the player too. We can use the tech to support visual physical movements or even to imply them using audio alone. We can listen to the resonances in isolation to understand what's being added here. This system is hooked into our propagation tech, which allows sounds to respect paths through rooms and doorways to reach the listener, normally the player. But in this case, rather than ensuring that what you hear respects the propagation paths within the world, we use the system to decide whether, for example, a resonance driver in one room should excite a resonator in another. So basically, if someone fires a weapon within a room, the objects in that room will vibrate differently to any objects that are outside that room. As with all tech, we have things to consider from a design perspective. There isn't going to be a one-size-fits-all system. Take, for example, you're in a ship. You might want to let the players experience a huge impact from a missile. It's a given you'd expect the ship and its internal contents to resonate when that happens. And this is perfect for that. But what about continuous resonances in a ship? We may want to use the system much more sparingly in these cases in order to avoid fatigue and focus more on the transient resonances as they convey more important information to the player. Much like a computer, the system needs rules to govern its output, so design needs to inform the system how it should be behaving. Resonance can become more of an event to convey excitement and useful information. It should serve the experience and could help make scenes pop from an audio perspective. While we have the option of using propagation to ensure that resonances don't travel through walls or geometry, we can see that there are cases where we may want it to do just that. A ship receiving an impact from a huge missile would have vibrations resonating through its structure, which in turn would resonate its contents. By vibrating the ship and the objects around the player, the impact becomes much more visceral and feels like a direct threat to the player rather than an event that just happened to some other part of the ship. The player's experience of the impact can then be more reflective of the damage done to their ship. So this is cool because uh, if you have a huge impact that's hitting your ship, yeah, if you're in the cockpit, you can see the impact, you can really feel it there. But if you're down in the guts of the ship in an engineering role or something like that, and impacts are happening on the ship, you're maybe not going to feel it so much. So what this system does is it brings the whole experience of the ship being hit to wherever you are. Resonance also sits nicely alongside our physical audio system, which handles the audio for the physicalization of props and objects in the world. 
You can already hear audible actions in the game, such as objects being thrown, rolled, handled, or impacted. This adds another layer to that physicality. Though with resonance, it doesn't need to be beholden to the physics of an object. Claudius and its underlying engine, SIG Audio, have been designed with rapid feature developments at their core. Now that a lot of the hard work under the hood has been done, we're able to quickly develop and iterate on features such as resonance that allow us to improve the experience of Star Citizen and enhance immersion to create a living, breathing world. As with all Claudius features, this is available to any object in any context, so its use doesn't even have to be limited to what we've shown here. For example, we could use the blast radius of an explosion to drive the player's ear ringing effect using the same system. Or we could affect mix changes within the radius of an event, such as a large explosion, ducking the other sounds around it to make even more room for impact. The tools are developed with creative freedom in mind and ultimately encourage experimentation. So usually the graphics and the visuals get all the headlines, but to us, the audio is equally, if not more, important. And we hope that you'll feel the same when all this work comes online. How'd I do? Good. Thank you. So what did we learn this week? Well, we learned that Claudius and its procedural audio tools allow for the systemic propagation of sounds and ships, stations and space above and beyond. And that reverberations don't just mean the events around you sounding and feeling as they should, they can also lead to tactical and gameplay implications for combat, uh, wear and tear, and much, much more. Now, don't forget the Ship Showdown is heading into the top 16 in just the next few days, and of course, the Mission Spotlight is still underway. And then, of course, we're only nine weeks away, nine weeks away, nine weeks away, from CitizenCon 2953, the now two-day event at the Los Angeles Convention Center, and tickets are still available. For Inside Star Citizen, I'm Jared Huckabee. Thanks for letting us share the process of game development with you, and we'll see you all here next week.